A mother in Washington County says her two children have been bullied for nearly three years and she is worried the school district has not done enough about it. 13 investigates Tessa Bentul and sat down with the family. She's here now to share their story. Tessa, good afternoon. Mark Sabrina, the teen's mother, says both her children struggle with anxiety and depression and even spend time in a mental health facility. Feeling like they've been bullied to the brink, she's run out of options, and that's why. Working on their thing and sometimes getting on each other's nerves. <laughs> Typical brother stuff, but these two are anything but typical. They are both transgender, born female, but identify as male. At 17 and 13, it has not been easy, especially at school. They've both attended Hartford Central Middle and High School in Washington County. They like call me like a bitch and stuff like that. Grayson describes his experience as a nightmare. They knew that I was queer, um, so they would call me fat around in the hallways. I was pushed downstairs, I was shoved in the hallways. Uh, kids would push me in doorways, uh, tell me that I'm not right. Grayson says dealing with the students was tough enough. He tried to get help from the school, the principal, the guidance counselors, even the school nurse, but he says nothing changed and the bullying only got worse. They had basically said that they will shoot anybody part of the LGBTQ community, starting off with me and my friend. It became, Mom, I don't want to live anymore because nobody likes me. Their mom, Sarah Murphy, says she is at her wit's end. Just having your kid be ter like terrified to get out of the car and it be an hour procedure and we have to go get the social worker or the school guidance counselor to come out and try to coax my child out of the car, crying. Both Grayson and Ashton struggle with depression and anxiety. Grayson even tried to take his own life. Sarah says multiple DASA Dignity for All Students reports have been filed, but hasn't seen anything change. She claims she was told to find another school district or homeschool. What a message is that sending these kids that you're supposed to be going to this place that's safe and nurturing? This year, Grayson has transferred to Lake Luzerne and says he can breathe again, but he still worries about his little brother left behind at Hartford. It made me feel like I kind of abandoned him when I moved. I really get scared when I know that he's going through a lot of the bullying because I do have that fear of what if something happens and I'm not there. We reached out to the Harper Central School Superintendent Andrew Cook, and while he can't comment on this specific case, he did spend a lot of time talking to us about all the precautions, procedures, and protocols put in place to make sure kids in his district are safe. He also says there is one crucial key to improving all situations involving children who are struggling. We'll tell you more about that coming up at 5 o'clock. Mark and Sabrina. Tessa, thank you. The number of teenagers and young adults in the United States who identify as transgender has doubled in the past five years. That is according to a new study published in June. The study was done by the UCLA School of Law's Williams Institute. There are 1.6 million people who are transgender in the U.S. The study found 1.4 percent of 13 to 17 year olds and 1.3 percent of 18 to 24 year olds identify as transgender. Five years ago, both of those numbers stood at 0.7 percent. Those numbers come during a year when some state legislatures have introduced bills targeting people who are transgender. According to the Human Rights Campaign, more than 130 anti-trans state laws have been proposed this year. In New York, guidance put in place in 2017 calls on schools to provide safety for transgender students. Two teens in Washington County say they've been bullied for years. They're now calling on the Hartford School District to change its ways. And while the superintendent says that he cannot talk about this specific case, he does insist that the district is doing everything it can to make sure that all the students feel safe and accepted. 13 Investigates' Tessa Bentulin joins us now to share a family story. Tessa. 
Rachel Elaine, bullying happens at virtually every school in the country. Even in 2022, not everyone welcomes diversity, including and perhaps especially members of the LGBTQ plus community. So how does a school district handle it when any student says he or she has been bullied to the brink? Hartford Central School is in the heart of a historically conservative region in Washington County, but it appears the school is trying to change with the times, highlighting Unity Day on social media, calling for kindness, acceptance, and inclusion. But when Grayson Barachina sees that post, I think that's how Hartford likes to trick people, thinking that, you know, oh, everything's fine, like, we're a lovely school, and then over here you have several bullying accounts and harassment issues. Grayson says he had to leave the school after years of intense bullying, all of which he traces back to being a transgender teen. Grayson's younger brother, Ashton, also identifies as a transgender male and faces similar challenges. The school district's first priority is to ensure the safety of anybody that enters our building. Andrew Cook, the school district superintendent, says he cannot talk about any individual student, but as a whole, complaints about bullying or peer conflict, real or perceived, are never ignored. Even if the investigation does not yield concrete proof, the school still takes steps to avoid future problems. Maybe that's adjusting security cameras in an area that's been, you know, a high traffic area where we've received complaints that there might be inappropriate behaviors taking place. So maybe we adjust that security camera. Maybe we adjust the route of our special patrol officer to ensure that they're in a specific area at a specific time where there's been concerns. You know, faculty and staff in the hallway during transition times, checking the bathrooms. Hartford is not alone in its efforts to increase safety and tolerance for a growingly diverse generation that faces a challenging society. A recent CDC study says transgender teens are far more likely to feel unsafe at school, to be bullied, to suffer from substance use disorder, and attempt or commit suicide. As far as Grayson and his mom are concerned, there needs to be some sort of advocacy or support group for all students who feel targeted. On that, all sides agree. We're open to anything. Uh, you know, when, when we talk about the safety of students, both their physical safety and their emotional safety, nothing is off the table. And tomorrow's Unity Day may be a start, but it's not going to solve all their problems. Cook says the best way to protect all students is to build positive, open relationships between parents, students, and school staff, adding they can't fix what they don't know.